All right, so this is part two of this series of videos. Um, if you, for some reason, found this video and you didn't watch part one, you might want to go do that um, and then come back to this one. All right, so let's look at something that has an oblique or a slant asymptote um, and kind of do a little pre-cal review in this, if you will. So when I look at my function here, I'm noticing I don't have a factor in the top and the bottom that cancel. Um, I do have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. And then if I look at my behavior of top and bottom, the top grows faster than the bottom. So I'm not going to have a line or y equals 0 that my end behavior approaches. Um, but because the numerator is 1 degree bigger than the denominator, I can do some synthetic division and see what this graph um, would look like at the ends. And I'll kind of talk about that here. So I need to make sure when I do my division, I'm doing long division here, um, that I divide this into um, the full top, meaning um, anywhere that there's an X, um, I would need to have a zero in front of that because there's not an X in the top then also plus zero, just like place value holders, if you will, um, or form holders for my full quadratic. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do my long division here. And I end up getting that this is equal to x plus 1 plus 1 over x minus 1. So over time, as x goes to plus or minus infinity, this term over here goes to 0. And so this is going to model the behavior of the line x plus 1 because I have at the end something that goes to 1 over something that gets really, 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 really big. So what does that look like on the graph? I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. And then my oblique asymptote or my slant asymptote is going to go through x plus 1. And so it's going to look a little something like this. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and find the derivative and do all the things we've been doing um, with curve sketching. So f prime is low d high minus high d low all over low squared. I end up getting 2x squared minus 2x minus x squared all over this denominator. And that ends up giving me x squared minus 2x all over x minus 1 squared. All right, um, I still have 1 as a problem, right? And I already know that. And then my other two critical points are going to come from the top being equal to 0. So I get x times x minus 2. All right, so x equals 0 and x equals 2 look like they're going to be points of interest. So let's go ahead. I'm going to just do my number line test up here with f prime and f. And I have 0. I need to include 1 and 2. Now, my denominator is always positive. So really, I'm looking at just the sign of the numerator here. And so if I plug in something like negative 1, I end up getting um, a positive over a positive, so increasing. If I plug in something between those, I end up getting a negative. If I plug in something between 1 and 2, I actually end up getting, let's see, 1 and a half. something negative. And then if I plug in like three or something like that, I get something positive. 
So it looks like I have a relative max here, a relative min here, and then that vertical asymptote going through, which is very interesting. All right, I'm gonna clear this out. And let's go ahead and find the second derivative. All right, so I have, move this just a smidge, low d high minus high d low, all right, to the one and then times inside would be one, all over low squared squared, so to the fourth. Um, very similar to last time, it looks like I have an x minus one that would factor out of the top, and I would be left with x minus one times two times x minus one, so x minus one times x minus one, we'll leave it like that for now, let's just see. And then over here, I get negative two times x squared minus two x. All over x minus one cubed. Oh, squared, or to the fourth. Then I cancel it with this and I get cubed. And then it just so happens, um, I'm not going to show all the steps here just to save some time, but this whole numerator ends up simplifying to 2. So I get 2 minus, um, or 2 over, excuse me, x minus 1 cubed, and that's my f double prime. I'm going to go ahead and erase this and write that in its place, and then we'll do the rest of our table here. All right, so if I look at, oops. There we go. If I look at f double prime, now I still have to include that vertical asymptote. That's still like a point of interest that I want to make sure that I, I look at. It's a break in my domain. Um, but if I plug in zero, let's just say, and cube the bottom, then I'm going to get negative cube. I'm going to end up having negative. So this is going to be concave down. And then if I plug in like two or 10 or whatever, I end up getting positives here. So this is concave up. All right, so I need a function that's gonna hug these two asymptotes that is concave down and goes from increasing to decreasing with a max at x equals zero. Let's plug in f of zero. We didn't do that. f of zero is zero over negative one, so zero. So it goes through the origin and that's my maximum. So the only way that that can happen, right, is if I have concave down increasing to that point and then turns and goes decreasing. All right, on this other side, I have two options. I might be down here, I might be up here. I need concave up with a minimum. Well, if I'm down here, I can't do that. So concave up with a minimum at x equals two must look something like this. And again, you can check, but that should be your, your graph if you go ahead and check that with a graphing calculator with Desmos. All right, one more example in these videos here. Let's look at what happens with a cusp. So um, when I'm looking at this as a function, I'm kind of like, oof, like that's a little bit weird, but let's plug in f of zero and just see what happens. I get zero minus one to the two thirds. Now that's gonna be the cube root of negative one squared. So that's going to give me one. So I know the point one, zero, one is on my graph. And then let's also find out when is this going to be equal to zero. Well, I know definitely at x equals one, I'm going to have a zero. Let's also plug in x equals negative one, and let's just see. So negative one minus one. No, it doesn't look like that's going to end up working out, right? Okay, so I don't have to have a zero at negative one. All right, there's no vertical asymptotes. Um, I'm not going to really worry about horizontal asymptotes. I don't really think anything's going on with this. It doesn't, it's not a rational function. Um, but let's go ahead and take the derivative and see what happens. So f prime would be two thirds 
x minus 1 to the negative 1 third. So that's 2 over 3 times the cube root of this. So I know f prime is undefined at x equals 1. Well, think about things that make f prime undefined. Um, sharp turns, uh, vertical um, tangents are really the two big ones. So I think that that's going to tell us a lot of things. Um, if we figure out what's going on on either side of 1, if I plug in 0, I end up getting negative numbers, so that's a decreasing function. And then um, if I plug in like 2, I get positives, so it must be increasing to decreasing. I don't think it's going to be a vertical tangent line, um, not a vertical asymptote on my original. Okay, I just know that my derivative is undefined here, so one of these two things need to happen, but I don't, I don't think it's this. I think it's going to end up being a cusp. It also says it in the problem, but just to kind of go through some things here. All right, so if double prime is, bring that down, negative 2 ninths, x minus 1 to the negative 4 thirds. So that's 2 over negative 2 over 9, cube root of this to the fourth. Now, this being to the fourth means that inside is always going to be positive. And it doesn't matter if you cube it, root first, and then fourth it. It doesn't matter. This bottom is always positive. This top is always negative. So our second derivative is always negative. So this needs to be a function that is always concave down. Always concave down that goes from decreasing to increasing. So decreasing concave down to this point increasing concave down looks like this, like a square root graph. And so this is what that graph looks like with, with the cusp there. 